Hello and welcome back to another part in my series of videos about Plex Media Server and Synology NAS. I've already done a video like this for the 920, the 220 and the 720, so it's only the 420 in the new generation of Synology NAS to go. This is about improving the performance of Plex Media Server on your NAS. Originally I was going to make one video for pretty much all of the new Intel Celeron J4000 NASs, but a number of you did highlight that you would rather there was dedicated one so they could at least be found later rather than a generic video, which wasn't easy to find when people are searching for their ID. And I get that, and it's good for me because I get more views and more subs and all that stuff. But let's get straight to the point. Today I want to talk about the DS420 Plus. Plex Media server performance on it is negligible, and a lot of that is to do with the driver that Plex utilizes. The CPU inside this NAS is actually pretty impressive. It is a dual core CPU, but it is quite highly regarded on CPU benchmark, and definitely for a NAS, a NAS server, I will say that the J4025 does do the job. Now this NAS has got two gig of memory inside, and yes, I am recording this in my office out here by the seaside during lo lockdown and COVID, but right there, hence the seagull in the background, really starting to annoy me. I've called him Gerald and I despise him, but let's stay on track, shall we? Now this NAS, We've done performance tests on this, we even had a whole video dedicated to the Plex performance on the DS420 and I did highlight in that video that I was going to show you guys exactly how to improve performance by getting Plex to utilise the default driver and not the IHD driver that it utilises by default. And in today's video what I'm going to do is show you two things. I'm going to be showing you here with this second camera on screen showing you guys exactly how this NAS currently handles H.265 and H.265 10-bit media without the fix, and then I'm going to show you how well it performs with the fix done. Now, before we go any further, let's get some disclaimers out of the way. First, everything you're going to do in today's video can be conducted in DSM. You don't need any knowledge of SQL or SSL access. All of it can be done by default on your Synology NAS. But nevertheless, what you are doing is still tinkering with an app. You are tinkering with things in the background, and therefore, like any alteration, and indeed generally, you should have, have a backup of all the data on your NAS elsewhere. You should really have two backups of any system, but just make sure your data is on another system, just in case. Another DAS, another NAS on the cloud, or on a USB. Next, bear in mind that the things we're going to do today apply to this version of Plex, but bear in mind that there are regular updates to Plex, and an update to Plex, either automatic or manual, may overwrite the changes we make today. So bear in mind that if uh, Plex's firmware is updated, it might undo what you're doing today, and you're going to have to repeat it. Next, today I'm using a 2 gig. Um, memory NAS so you will notice at times that the, the memory utilization may seem unusually high but a lot of that is to do with the fact that as you see from this purple line here on the bottom the purple line is the NAS itself caching and taking advantage of a lot of the system resources by default and the green line is Plex Media Server you need to look at the green line not the purple line because you want to know that Plex is going to do a better job of playing back this media but in the background the Synology NAS will always make a point of kind of holding on to a lot of memory and using it for intelligent caching and flushing when needed so you might see this green line rise and the purple line barely change at all so bear that in mind so you might be using a NAS with more or less memory than this so that will make an impact and finally the changes we're making today are going to improve playback on this Intel Celeron CPU quite a bit, but there's no avoiding the simple fact that this is still a Celeron processor. And if you are buying a NAS for a Plex Media Server and you want top end 4K, you should be looking at an i3, an i5, or an i7 Intel Core processor. Plex on this NAS isn't really designed to go higher than 1080p, maybe some real, real low end 4K. But for the most part, you should only be looking at 1080p transcoding for Plex on a NAS like this. So, let's get started. First thing you need to do is make sure you have got Plex Media Server already set up. You've already installed it and set up a Plex Pass if need be. You put your media on it and all that. Make sure you've got Plex already set up. The next thing you're going to need to have in the package center is, the, um, is two tools. The first tool is the text editor. And the text editor is completely free. Just install it, you don't have to open it. Just click 
they install and it's here at the bottom and install the text editor program. The next thing you need of course is Plex Media Server which you've already installed but leave Package Center open for now and I'll show you why that's important. Now while we're doing this, this is why I've got the second screen. The second screen, I'm going to show you just how poorly H.265 Media works. Now, for those that aren't aware, H.265 is a compression technique. It allows for better quality pictures to be contained in a certain package. All video codecs and uh, video playback is based on compression. And different compressions allow higher quality media to be in more contained file packages. So I'm just gonna move the mic. I'm going to move over here and I'm going to show you what I mean. Now, if we go by the list view, on screen you can make out all of these different file types. They go from a very light 1080p file to an incredibly dense 4K file here at the bottom. Now, the first file format is H.264. Now, this is the, is the older compression technique for 4K. It's 3 megabits per second, but still nevertheless, if we click play, this file will play fine. Even though it's the older codec and the file sizes are generally larger, it's able to play this larger file format. If we exit this and it is playing it back in the original version, no transcoding. If we move down, we can look at the next tier down. And this is the H.265 file or HEVC, but I'll continue to call it H.265. Now H.265 is the more compressive um, file compression technique but if we try to play it on this now and this is a very low end file I might add you may notice it already needs buffering and if we look down the bottom then as it's instantly required to transcode and we've got pixelation problems we've got playback problems and it doesn't even buffer quick enough for the playback to not overwrite it and stop the file the same goes for H.265 10-bit, which is also known as HDR. If we go for this 10-bit file, we open it up. Once again, it needs to transcode immediately. It can't even attempt this file, and it's barely going to play, if at all. And if you look at the CPU and memory utilization there on screen, you see the bumps where it's attempting both playbacks and just struggling. But what's interesting is CPU and memory don't go to the top. They don't max out. The system just fails. It either kills out on the file and stops playing it back or freezes as we see here on screen. So this isn't about the CPU power or the amount of memory as you can see here. It's about the CPU's ability to perform a task and this comes down to the driver. This CPU has embedded graphics, and um, aka a transcoding engine, what we talk about in NAS more than anything, and it has a driver where it does this handling. Now, the best driver that it recommends you use is the H, uh, sorry, the i965 driver. But Plex in its current form, and this is nothing that Synology or QNAP or Acer Store or any of the brands can do about, but the latest versions of Plex force the system to use another driver called the H I, so the IHD driver now this driver is just what the problem is we need the system to make the switch to that other driver and that's what we're going to do today so the first thing we need to do is go into the package center find plex media server which is running open it up and where the arrow is right here click the arrow and select stop we need to stop Plex Media Server because we're going to be altering it in the background. You don't have to shut it down, but it will affect performance and potentially invalidate what you're doing if you don't shut Plex Media down first. And as you can see on the right and on the camera, Plex has been booted out. The next thing we need to do is go into File Station. And within File Station, go to the main directory of your NAS, as you see here. And on that directory, you'll find lots of different files and folders. But if you've installed Plex, there will be a new one just called Plex. Now, within this folder, scroll over and find the folder called Library. In Library, there's another folder called Application Support. In there, another folder called Plex Media Server. And in there, scroll to the bottom and find Preferences.xml. Double click and it will open in the in the text editor we installed earlier the next thing you need to do is scroll all the way to the end 
And as you see, there's lots of information there about the setup of your Plex server. Now, the thing we want to concentrate on is this slash and this arrow at the end here. If we zoom in a little bit, we can see that slash and that arrow. Now, what we need to do is copy the following. Vapi I driver equals co um, uh, quotation mark I965 quotation mark space slash arrow. So copy all of that and it should be either in the description and or the NAS compare article in the description. Copy that text, head back into the text editor and copy over the slash and the arrow with that text. And if we scroll all the way to the end, you'll see that now instead of the slash, we have got space vapi driver equals bracket, I'm sorry, not bracket, quotation, I-965 quotation, space, the spaces are very important, slash, and then the arrow symbol there. So make sure you've got that in there. Then head up to file, and then click save. This now saves that configuration and this new driver instruction. From here, exit file station, Go into the package center again and click run under Plex Media Server. This will now reboot your Plex Media Server, which can take anywhere between one and five minutes, depending on the power of your NAS and the size of your library, because it will perform another scan while you're doing it. Luckily, I don't have a large amount of media on this NAS for this test, and this is just a throwaway account. But as you can see, the DS420 is now back up and running, both there on the camera screen and here on the screen here. So now we've instituted the system to use a brand new driver. Let's see if it worked. So now we're going back into the Plex Media Server and this is the DS420 Plus still. And as before, we're gonna go straight into the three megabits per second H265 file. This is the one that was our first struggling file. We're going to open up the monitor there at the bottom. You can see that it is trying to convert. It has transcoded. And now it is playing back that file. Fine. The file that got us kicked out of Plex is now running absolutely fine. It's been transcoded very minimalist, a uh, very small amount. And it is very good to go. So let's click out of that and go for another one. We'll go for the H265 10-bit HDR file. Once again, it will transcode in the background. We can see the spikes there on the performance monitor and the file is playing lovely and smooth. And this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about this system being able to utilize the correct driver to play back these files. Now, the reason I mentioned earlier on about the limitations of this CPU is because as good as this is, this isn't a miracle cure. The Celeron, as good a CPU as it is, is still not a breathtaking CPU like an Intel Core. So as we move up the ranks, if we go for now the 10-bit H265, you're gonna see that even though you can now play back these media files with a great deal more ease, it's still not going to be perfect as you reach the upper echelons of high-end HD 1080p and of course 4K. These are limitations that you're going to find moving forward. So now we go for 30-bit H.265, and this is where we're going to start to see the struggle. Now, the struggle is evident along the bottom as you watch the system buffering with that orange line there at the bottom to buffer ahead of the playback. And the buffering is only just staying out of the, the line. As you can see, we're up to here buffering. And it's only just going to beat the playback of this 30 second file. So again, if we now move into 100 megabit H265, I think this will be the killer. This will be the one that shows our system can't do it. It's transcoding. It's still maintaining 100 megabits at 1080p. But as you can see, the transcoding, the buffering is just barely out of reach of the play. And as soon as this file plays, I very much doubt that it's going to play back this whole file. So do remember that what you're doing today will vastly improve the performance of 
your Plex Media Server on a Synology DS420, Intel Celeron J4025 NAS, but bear in mind that this is still a low to mid-range NAS for Plex Media Server, and if you want to look at high-end media, you may have to put your hand in your pocket and buy an Intel Core. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Once again, there is a link in the description to NAS Compares where I'll go through all of the ways in which you, all the steps for today and all the copy pastes. Click like if you've enjoyed the video. Click subscribe to learn more. And I'll see you next time.